Welcome back to the last chapter of our uh, model and code uh, tutorial. And now it is the second appendix. As we uh, discussed in the last chapter, uh, the naturalization of form. So this is how we discussed how to seamlessly in, in integrate uh, problems of civil engineering into our mechanics of uh, coding architectural models. Now we want to go and go for production or how to control and derive the movement of a robot from the uh, architectural model. So we will go there. It's very similar and very impressive how simple it is. So in the civil engineering example, we <coughs> had a system of linear equations and we derived the form from the gravity. Now we derive the production from form and then we uh, are there with the robot. Therefore, the robotic control is direct, is, is a rendering of the form. So it's uh, straightforward uh, and derived from the form itself. It doesn't need any other uh, modeling. Uh, and this is what I want to show. Uh, there's a written example of that in the recently uh, published Atlas of Digital Architecture, chapter 13, and this is on brickwork and working with robots here. We are following these arguments there. There's also <coughs> a, a section in, the, in a lecture of last year. You can watch a more comprehensive uh, view on my discussion here in this tutorial. Now we want to go in detail and in the mechanics and how this works. So uh, let's go in detail and model this robot. <clears throat> so and the, the, the mechanics of this robot as a system of equations. So how to do that? It's very straightforward with, the, with how to set up graphics with translations and rotations. And uh, here it is. So we, we have the uh, point uh, zero, zero, zero. That's the point here where the uh, robot is positioned. We say this is PO assigned to this coordinate. Then there is a translation for P1. So this is two units in uh, Z. Therefore, there's a T1. It's called a translation form 002 this movement and then P1 is this movement applied to P0. Uh, so let's, uh, let's uh, go here and check how it is. Therefore we create a new file, a new notebook, put that uh, here. Everything would be smoother and faster in the and then in a notebook on your desktop, but uh, I try to make it in the cloud. So it's a little rough in interaction, but I think it's good to have it like this for therefore you don't have to pay any attention to licenses and so on. It's just ready to work like this. So if we evaluate that here, because we're always working uh, in the same environment, you can look for the position 2P1. This should be 002. It's here. And the translation is um, this function. So it's a matrix. You can look it up uh, in Mathematica how all these uh, make all graphics with translations and rotations are working. So this is a function. If I put this function to P0, then it's moving this point. So if I, I can put apply it to P2, then it's moving up again once. So this is how this translation function works. There's also a rotation function, rotation transform. We call it R1 <coughs> because we want to rotate uh, around the Z axis, the robot. You should be able to rotate and this is called alpha. <clears throat> so this rotation transformation alpha 
that's a variable. We want to keep that uh, variable around the z axis, and there's no offset in, uh, so it should around the axis around this point here. So, and this is uh, alpha, and then we have around the y axis. This is for, for this arm, how she, he should uh, uh, rotate. This is around the y-axis, z-axis, y-axis, uh, beta. So, rotation 2. And there's a translation 2. This is the length of this arm, and this is 4 units around whatever, it, around, uh, yeah, it's a translation of 4. So now, if I put these things in line, so then our point P2, that's P1, PO, P2 should be here. Our point P2 derives from point O. Then there should be a translation 2. So here we go, translation 2, rotation 2, rotation 1, translation 1. So we go back, uh, translation, rotation, rotation, translation. So that's two. So therefore, we can ask for P2. And now, because there are variables, we can't solve these variables, but we know, depending on the angles here, alpha and beta, uh, these are the points on B2. For this point, the same, there's another a translation and another rotation. So we say alpha, beta, gamma around y, translation 5 half, that's the length of, of, the, of the arm here, and then P3 is PO, T3, R3, T2, R2, R1, T1. That's P3. So if we go for P3, then we have more complex uh, 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 functions with three variables, alpha, beta, and gamma. So the transformation is uh, T, T2, or this. Uh, we have a T3, is this. We have um, an <coughs> R2, this function. R1 is this matrix. So, that's it. This is the mechanics of our robot, So, which means we control P by angles. So we have a parametric graphic object. Uh, we have three variables for the parametrics, three parameters. Uh, and these are the angles of this robot. If we have a linear uh, robot, for example, a, a printer, X, Y, and Z, we, uh, we have only translations to, to uh, and make three variables, X, Y, and Z, to meet a point with the mechanics, uh, for example, if on a milling machine. In this case, because it's more impressive, we go with the angles. So therefore, our structure, we call this a structure of the robot. It's this, it's a mechanics. And we can control these uh, mechanics by uh, the parameters. So we can set the parameters, for example, alpha to pi, beta to minus uh, 45 degrees, and uh, gamma to uh, 90 degrees. So, and then we apply these rules to the structure. So the points are this, with all these formulas. We apply that, and then we um, we can simplify the, um, <coughs> the coordinates and all the, so now we have specific uh, numbers. We can, this is symbolic numbers, so they are precise in the irrational, as irrational numbers. We can go and say, uh, for example, n of rp, hopefully this works, and then we get uh, computational numbers, but we have the problems of, uh, so these are computational numbers, but we have problems of uh, computating errors. So we have the problem of identity of these things, of these irrational numbers here. Maybe because we are circular, we have to do that. So, 
but uh, this is how to control the mechanics of a robot with three parameters. So we have a, a graphical object with three parameters, a parametric object of the robot. This robot now needs, uh, <coughs> needs a graphics. So we have the structure of the robot, we have the parameters, and uh, this function here, robot G, is producing cylinders, spheres, and so on at these, at these points here. And uh, if we uh, say robot G, give the structure, give the parameters, the parameters here, the structure here. If we give that, then we have a, a certain a, a graphic, so I'll keep that off. Here we have the graphic code, it's a graphic complex. We discussed how this works. And if we put that and render that with the renderer graphics 3D, then uh, we have our robot arm with parameters. We can change the parameters, then the robot arm will move. This is done with um, here, show robot says, yeah, we don't want not only the robot, we want its environment, we want the artifact, we want the coordinate system and so on. This is what we have here, graphics 3D. We, we are not happy with these uh, edges, the uh, black lines, so we say we don't want to see the edges, just the faces. Then we say there's red, an infinite line, green uh, for the X and Y coordinates here, infinite line. Then we go for the robot, we want to have that orange, and then we have the artifacts. So artifacts, the robot, the points the robot should um, should uh, meet with his uh, movement. So this is our architectural model, and we say uh, this is with the options we put points. Uh, we want to show that. So therefore, if we use show robot structure and parameter, he will show the robot. The robot is here with structure and. It's the same what we had here. And then it's a short environment, coordinate system, and some artifacts, points of, for the artifacts. In this case, we have two points. And uh, that's show robot to make it uh, simple. And this says two points, the robot arm, and so on. So there is a interactive version this is not working pretty well on the in the cloud but uh, you can do it on desktop and it's very impressive but it's working so we can control the parameters alpha beta and gamma and uh, here you see there's a lot of crazy stuff but we have to work on that that the robot can should move only in reasonable ways, which means <coughs> we need some uh, constraints. Delete that on the cloud. Some constraints. We say robot constraints, alpha, beta, and gamma should be reals, and alpha should be from minus pi to plus pi, beta should be minus pi ha half to zero, and um, uh, gamma should be uh, this between O and 3 pi uh, fourth. So these are the constraints. So this is part of the robot. So because he can't move uh, and, and make these uh, crazy movements. So therefore we can uh, ask here, for example, parameters two, show robot with parameters two. And this is this one here. And this is a crazy setup. Uh, this one was proper, this was with parameters, with parameters too it was bad. So now we can ask with the check with the robot constraints of parameters. So we have here two sets of parameters and ask the robot constraints of the parameters and then uh, we say we see this is okay and the second one is not okay because it doesn't meet the constraints which is a logical test. So this is end element, smaller, and so on. You can make these kind of checks. So now the artifact, these are the points. 
this is what we had. Now we go here for minus 4 and 3, take one of these artifacts and uh, show that this is our uh, question. The question now is how to move the robot to this point to do, uh, to do something. So the end point of the robot is here. This was this formula. And now we simply can say the point P3 should be equal to the artifact, which is minus 4, minus 3, 0, and the first element of it. So the, we always say there should be a lot of points to, to, to move to with the robot arm. So this is only one point. We take the first one, therefore we say artifact 1. We, we say solve P3 at this point and then we want to have that as a computational number so and you want to go for alpha beta and gamma and solve these problems these things and then we see they are uh, there's a set of solutions alpha here this the next solution so and these are how solutions how to move to to this artifact but again, it's a solver to solve a linear equation. And we, we, we uh, set the movement of the, so the movability uh, of the robot or the kinetics of the robot and equal that uh, to the artifact, which is our architectural model, step by step. So if we now go with the constraints, with our solution, then we see three of them are false, one is true, so we can reach the point uh, with the fourth solution, uh, with the fourth set of angles. So, which means we uh, select this. If there's more, then we uh, just have a random choice. We can have um, later on, for example, if there are multiple uh, ways how to do it, then we can. Instead of just saying random choice, if there are multiple uh, multiple um, uh, solutions here, then uh, in this case we make it simple, just random choice. Uh, but for example, we can have these uh, these angles, and then we can have, um, for example, shortest path, so that the robot has not to move uh, too much to go from one to the other place. So we have the shortest path, they have a smooth connections of from, for, uh, throughout the points of the artifact. So, but here it's enough with, uh, with this solution here. So now we can say, show the robot structure position one, which is uh, our here. So this is, these, these are the three angles as we had it for the principal uh, demonstration, the parameters here. Now so this is parameters that we call the position because it's derived from the artifact. And the points is the artifact. We want to show the artifact and the robot meeting the artifact. And this should be working. So now the robot meets the artifact. That's it. So I find that very uh, impressive. Now we can have multiple artifacts. So this is our architectural model. Now we go and find the solution for each of the artifacts. So make that uh, a pure function. Have the asterisk here as a variable of the pure function and apply the list of artifact, artifact points to these. So we have a path. Then the parameters. So we have a list. Again, so we will have multiple alternatives here. And for all of them, we want to uh, select random choice of the selection rob constraints on the things and this should give a list of angles. We can work on that, but I think in this example, as I showed with the shortest path to optimize uh, the, to minimize the movement of the, of the robot arm. And uh, if we want to see that now we can have uh, show robot 
for example here show the robot it's the same thing again a, a pure function apply the path and then we see how the robot is producing uh, certain th some things and we can say list animate of this and uh, then we get a short animation of the robot producing our artifact. So now he's producing. That's it, surprisingly. So you can go to more complex forms and so on, but the principle is always the same. The complexity now over the form is with the architectural artifact. The robot is controlled by these few lines. And there's a rendering uh, of, uh, a specific rendering of the artifact. So therefore you have an architectural model coded, and uh, then you have a renderer to control uh, the movement of the robots. As we have a renderer to count, uh, for example, the elements of the architectural art artifacts, or as we have a renderer to do the 3D graphics of the architectural artifact. And the interesting thing is that the code, the very comp comp uh, compressed, as we, dis as we discussed in the early chapters of uh, this tutorial, this is very compact and this is uh, code and it stays code and it's, you, you can adapt it and use it for any purpose. And that's uh, the interesting things. And this is what I wanted to show you. And I think that's it with uh, this tutorial. Thank you for watching. Hope you find it found it interesting and I'm looking forward for interesting discussions.